should get yeah. my, my good side too. Yeah, the good side, the good side. The, the, so. one, the one with the least amount of moles. That and I, my beard's patchy on, yeah, right here. It's weird. Yeah. Nah, they patchy. can't notice, they yeah. can't notice. It's kind of weird yeah. and patchy. I forgot to shave too. All right, what is going <laughs> on, Mayo Gang? We got Boaz over here. And, and Isaiah. And we have a special guest today. I like that, special. Hi, what's up everyone? I'm David with Lancer Tactical. That's absolutely, right. That's absolutely. right. Yes. Yeah. So this is the first time we've ever had like a special guest. I think like this for the season. For, for the, the season. season. In, yeah, in a yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah. In a very long time. Wait. What's What's the point of a podcast if you don't have any guests? Absolutely. Right? And things are about to get very spicy. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. And you no, know, like we said in the previous episode, this is a work in progress. We're still building up the production value of the podcast. So. Um, but I heard what's to come, and it sounds very, you know, very promising. Big, very big cool. dreams, big dreams, yeah, yeah. In the yeah, works, yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. in the so, works, for sure. So usually I ask for, usually when I, because, you know, like, I, I'm i the one that builds sets and yes. does all the lighting everything, everything that you see here so in terms of, like, production usually, value, it's all thanks to this man. So, so usually what happens is uh, I'll ask for, like, everything I want, like, my dream, my dream vote list, and then they'll say no, so I have to, like, knock it down a couple pegs. <laughs> but, hey, I mean, I mean, that's, that's life in, in the corporate sphere anyway. Hey, so. big shout out to you, man, because, yeah. man, like, you're given a shoestring budget, and uh, with the amount of uh, uh, things we're able to achieve with that, it's pretty impressive. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I don't really think it's that great but <laughs> no, no, you said, well, but anyway yes we do have a special guest on for today so today's gonna be a little bit different we're gonna be doing kind of interview style a little yeah. bit and uh i have some questions written down obviously but we might be uh, interjecting with a few other questions as well yeah but uh but david why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself to the audience like uh yeah, man. yeah you said you're from lance tactical what exactly is it that yeah you do? so i'm the marketing manager here at lancer, lancer tactical so a lot of the stuff you see on the instagram the youtube i'm making all those videos i travel to events uh do camera work at events make event videos do kind of just like the um, uh, like relations, I guess you could public say. Public relations. Pu like public PR. relations. Yeah. Yeah. So what you know, that's probably one of the more fun parts of my job is all these really cool events and fields I get to go to. Like just a few months ago, I got to go to the Six Flags in New Orleans for the the Mere Tactical Battle of New Orleans event. That sounds so cool. It was it was cool, but dude, I heard the weather was. It was way too hot. Yeah. Oh. New like it gets hot here in Cali, but. That was, south heat was, was the it humidity? humidity. Yeah, oh. the humidity. My, yeah. So on day two, it was so hot that I didn't want to wear my full face goggle. Oh. So I literally just wore eye pro. Yeah. And oh, just I, shooting glasses. Just shooting glasses. Okay. And it was so hot that my eye pro, f f it looked like if you're like scuba diving and you get like water in your in your oh. goggles, oh. and it's just like that. I couldn't see. Are anything. you a sweaty boy? I'm a, I run hot, yes. Okay, all right. I, I feel that. I, I, I feel think, that. I think we're a room full of sweaty, sweaty boys over yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I run my AC constantly at home. Uh, I'm usually the first one in the office here. I turn the AC on and mm -hmm. then I turn it down four or five degrees from what the previous person yeah. ah, put yes, it up to. Yes, yes, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, New Orleans was just, it, it was so, the AO was so cool. Yeah. Um, like with the, the scenery and the mm. set and how destroyed it was from Hurricane Katrina and stuff like that. A little bit sketchy. I mean, so, Hurricane Katrina is not cool, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Let me rephrase. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. shout Let out to my girl Katrina. Oh, it God. Made for, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, it made for a very cool AO, just how yeah. it, how it weathered and destroyed yeah, and yeah. that theme park of and course. stuff Landed like that. Park, yeah. There was there was gators in my video. I, I got uh, how close? Of course, I got pretty close. I'd have to say three feet from a gator. Whoa. Granted, it was in the water, and I was up on a, a pathway that did like a big circle. The whole park was designed like in a big circle. Mm. Yeah, but those things can jump though. Thing. Anyway, yeah. So. yeah, that's what my buddy told me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I was with the um, I was with Alex, who's the owner of Mirror Tactical, and he tried to scare it away by like throwing a stick in the water. But little did we know that you only get it only attracts them. It sees the ripples in the water, and it came closer. Yeah, there's something so, that's grabbing its attention. But it was a baby gator. It, mm. it, it wasn't like a full size big one. Um, mm. I heard some other people saw some other ones there. Um, but so there was that. There were some like hornets and stuff buzzing around. I didn't see any water moccasins, which is good because that was probably my biggest fear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where, water I'm, snakes are. I'm, I'm not no good. really afraid of snakes yeah. per se, but just, you know, when you're walking around in some of those overgrown areas, you can't see you don't know what's into. there. Yeah. There's so much noise going on with all the, you know, the people, people shooting, people running around yelling and stuff like that. So the, the light amount of pyro that was being used and stuff, you know, so I figured a lot of the snakes might get scared away which is probably why I didn't see any of them mm -hmm. with all the people there. 
but yeah, super cool event. Yeah, to um, a snake, it probably sounded like World War Three was going on. Yeah, <laughs> would love to go back, but they're demoing that area in, actually I think it's starting to go on now. They said September Dang. to October. They're, oh, wow. they're making way for like new condominiums and stuff like that. Of course, that. of course. You can always trust private equity firms and real oh, estate yes. investment trusts to take cool areas and turn it into houses that no one can afford. But that's a cool area that's only cool to people like us. Of yeah. course. You know? Yeah. That or like, it's cool for like us, like graffiti artists, yeah. you know. And but there, there's a really big urban exploration community in the US. Oh yeah, that, even there's yeah. a whole site on TikTok like exploring just that of just like going into abandoned areas and just seeing what they can find. And that's how I did all my research on this AO was on YouTube and watching all the different videos of yeah. people that knew kind of stuff like that. Yeah. Just because then that's why I knew what I was up against. The gators, the hornets. Yeah. Supposedly there was wild boars too. Nice. But they called animal control because oh. of they're gonna, you know, flip it in the condos and they started getting rid you know taking care of all the wild boars and stuff like yeah, that yeah, yeah. so Dang. that right. would have been cool just to get on film and getting charged yeah. by a wild boar you yeah, know it'd be sick. dude it's yeah. awesome you know? content yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. airsoft versus boars who would win but yeah, so okay, so we're jumping ahead of ourselves a little bit. Uh, obviously, you are working in the airsoft industry, but you actually didn't start uh, working in the airsoft industry at first. You actually, I didn't know this until a little bit while ago, but you actually started off in the paintball side of things. Yeah, and so even before that, I, I've always been kind of like in action sports slash, and then I guess with paintball and airsoft, that's impact sports is kind of like yeah. what we call it. So before even paintball, I was in the surf industry and ski industry. Um, so that, you know, same kind of, almost kind of idea-ish. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've been paying paintball like my whole life since, I'm gonna date myself here, but I've been playing paintball since I think 94 or something like that. Ooh. 90, maybe, 94, like 95, 96. Yeah, but, but, but like kids, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You don't need to be mean, but yes. Yes, no, I am. I'm a, bo I'm a what I call myself a boomer, you know? Um, so I, you know, Typical paint, paintball starter story, friend's birthday party, fourth grade, loved it, you know? Um, it just so happened that um, someone that used to, uh, my dad owns a car repair business, his sure. shop foreman used to play pro paintball back in the day, back before they had lower face protection, when they were just wearing goggles and they had squeegees in their mouth and stuff like that to clean their guns. Like the OG stuff yeah, right Yeah, OG, there. OG. But he had all these paintball guns at his, work, at his workbench at the shop. And, um, you know, I took a, you know, for, fourth grade, you know, you, you, and you're playing like a, a hunt, you know, like hunting sport, like most dangerous game kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I got hooked right away. And so my dad was, you know, lucky enough to, he bought one of the guns off of his foreman for me. It was this gun called a mini mag. Uh, made by Air Gun Designs. I wish I still had it. I traded it for a pump gun. Uh. Um, but I wish I still had that pump gun because I traded that for something else. Um, I guess that's kind of, I guess, very similar with Airsoft and Paintball. You know, you go through. You just cycle your different phases. Yeah, you just go through and just trade and, and you know, keep trading up or trade for more and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so he got me a gun and then I played a decent amount in elementary school. It wasn't really till like end of middle school, high school that I was like competing and playing on sponsored teams and traveling to like different, you know, turn like national tournaments and stuff like that. Um, but the whole time I was doing like that, um, I've always had like, a, you know, like a, ca a camera in uh, interest in film or making, not even, I would even say film, making, just making videos. Just content in general. Yeah, and so I had like a, a old JVC camcorder at a pretty young age. I had DV Pinnacle Studio as my editor. Have you even heard of that as an editing program? Nah, no. Bro. It's like I use those... iMovie and uh, Windows Movie Maker growing up. <laughs> okay, so yeah. this I think even predates iMovie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, probably like one of the first like non-linear editing uh, systems. Yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, I'm or, sure. or no, because because were you shooting on what VHS Betamax? No, mini DV tape. Mini DV tape. Yeah. Okay, so like when you scan it to your computer, so you do, you uh, capture it. You got to do the capture. capture. It captures in real time, which is uh -huh. terrible. Yeah. So if you film for an hour, you're sitting there for an, for an hour. hour. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're capturing scanning all of it, it. yeah, oh my yeah. God. and it's scanning it's one to one yeah. time. So yeah, you just yeah. sit there and I just you know. Yeah. <laughs> just just wait. Play back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait. Oh, you know, so 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 that 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 is a linear editing system. That yeah. You are doing linear editing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, actually, I, used to, I used to do that too. No, because uh, I think it was nonlinear. Because I could move stuff around and st it was closer to Premiere or Vegas than it would be to like Avid, Media Composer. Yeah, but Avid is also nonlinear. The Avid's not. Yeah. 
Oh yes, you're right. Sorry, yeah. I have them switched up. Yeah. Avid's nonlinear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and no, we have it backwards, because, don't we? No, no, because back in the film <laughs> days, it was linear editing because you would you would you would edit on a moviola. Which is so, so yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So so you, you move the film around, right? Yeah, on a then bench. you then you cut because all the film is Yes. Is it, so you cut and you move, you splice. So feel free to fact check us by the way in the comments section. <laughs> no, no, he's right. I, yeah, I, so I, when I was in college yeah, they made us learn yeah. on eight millimeter mm -hmm. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and we so, had to cut so what happens is like yeah, it becomes linear because you are you're you're taking that one hour clip, let's say, yeah. of all the clips that you recorded on, mm -hmm. on your mini DV, right? Then you cut it up, you move around. That's linear. Nonlinear is where you have all the clips already, and you. Well, move the around. thing is, is you could set in and out capture. Oh no, I'm thinking of Final Cut now. Yeah. Man, this was so long ago that okay, I'm, all right, I'm all right. We're going down the wrong road. We have road. developed yeah. Yeah. so yeah, much. We're, we're turning into yeah. a video guy yeah. podcast. No, it's all good, man. Hey, man, you know, but, I'm pretty sure so, some people appreciate that. So I ha I, when I had that camcorder, you know, when I was into skating and stuff, I'd make skate videos, and then it progressed into paintball videos. How old were you when you started doing this? 12, probably. Oh, dang, so pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can even go further back than that. When I was like, oh, God, this is it's kind of embarrassing sometimes, and people might try to look stuff up which is scary, but when I was like seven and eight, I used to act professionally. Like I was in a bunch of TV shows. Commercials, baby. Ah. I was in commercials. Like I did an Apple computer commercial. Yo, oh, Dude, I'm big, now big, gonna time. Look this big time, big time. Yeah. By, directed by Joe Pitka, who directed the original Space Jam. And he also used to do all the commercials, the Pepsi ones with uh, like Britney Spears and Michael Jackson. Damn. So, Dude, and, big time star So over I did here. two commercials for him. Yeah. My first commercial I ever book was Sun Made Raisins. Oh, okay. Nice. Which I can't believe I got that because on my audition they asked me if I liked raisins, and, and I like, told no. them, and I told them I hated raisins. <laughs> and then I told my mom, they like this my kid spunk. I'm leaving the audition. My mom goes, "How'd it go?" He's like, "Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. They, they asked me if I liked raisins. I told them no." My mom got so mad at me. She's like, "David, you need to lie to these people." <laughs> And I'm like, okay, seven-year-old me yeah. being told by my mom, you know, my mom's, you know, much older, yeah, yeah, yeah. that I need to lie to these, to these people But mom, people you said I should always me. be honest with everything. Not, yeah. No, no, but that's the movie business. Yeah, it you. is. You want to be a star, yeah. don't so, you? Yeah. So, but, and then she was like, I, we're never going on these ever again. And I didn't go on, I don't think I, she took me on any auditions for two weeks. And then I got the call saying I got that commercial. And then I was like, yeah. see, told you. You got to be honest. Damn, it's probably because he was probably the cutest little boy in, 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 the, <laughs> Dude, in, in the casting Maybe room. I'll show you guys. Yeah. Because two of the commercials are on YouTube, not uploaded by me. Just yeah. right, like yeah, so, the yeah. Apple one is on YouTube, uh -huh. um, and then I also did a, a Disney a Walt Disney World commercial wow. where they, they flew me to oh. they flew me to Florida first class oh. for wow. ten days, and then it, it was like a, a mix between like a, it was a what you did on your summer vacation uh, like commercial wow. and, and i was a kid that had this amazing vacation at disney world so we shot 10 days in disney world and then i came back home for a little bit then they flew me to new york uh and we shot the classroom stuff wow yeah so, so but anyway so when we wrapped on that commercial on that commercial the director uh mark chiat he used to do the foster farm commercials oh, okay I mean, you guys might be too young for that with the um like the puppet, like chickens, chickens. Yeah, yes. I, I saw those commercials. So he gave me an eight millimeter camera as a wrap present. Wow, Whoa, that's a rap good rap present. Rap yeah, rap and rap I, st I still have it to this day. I use yeah. that same camera in my freshman year film class in, in college. So is a standard eight mil or super eight? Super eight. Oh, mm. yeah. So yes. it's wider. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he, I, I shot a bunch of stuff when I was a kid with it, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing that it's a whole process. If you ever want to see that footage, you got to send it off, get developed. Yep. Yep. You know, then get it back, cut it and splice it and stuff like that. If they, if you didn't get a digital transfer yeah. from them, there's only like a couple places now, now in right? LA. Burbank. Yeah, it's got Burbank. The spot. Yeah, yeah. I used to in college. I'd send my film to Burbank to get processed. Wait, which, which, uh, which, which house was it? If you say the name, I would know. Okay, because uh, the only one that can come to my mind right in the top of my head was just Photochem. They were just like the biggest. That's it, Photochem. Yeah, Photochem, yeah, yeah they're yeah, the yeah. biggest. Yeah, so we used yeah. to send, uh, everyone in my class would pretty much send stuff to Photochem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so where was I even going with this? So yeah, so I got the camera, I started shooting some stuff. I never shot paintball with that camera. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's tough using a, a real film camera. But then I got my camcorder and I started making like little paintball edits and stuff like that. And back when I was doing it in the early 2000s at that time, there was like, this is like pre YouTube or early YouTube. Yeah, of course. So, early, I, early. so I got a website, but luckily my brother, um, he was good at like photo and he learned how to design websites. So my little brother built my website for me. Keep in mind, I'm like 13 years old. My brother's sure. 12. He built my website for me. I used to host all my videos on my website. Cause I used to think YouTube killed quality. Yeah. Cause it was pre HD days yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and so I would host all my videos and I got my my website off of a dude I met through because I played a lot of Counter Strike growing up. Yeah. And he would host Counter Strike <laughs> servers. 
So I did this one video release. The video was called Encore. It was a 30 minute video. I covered like some national events, some pro practices and stuff like that. And I, I had some like of a bit of a following on off of this paintball forum called PB Nation. This is like preface. This is MySpace days. Yeah. Got it. I did all my marketing on MySpace and PB Nation. Um, and I released this video, all my friends, like a bunch of people like hyped it up and then went so many people were downloading it, I crashed all of his Counter-Strike servers and I get a, a, a IRC message from him. Dude, I'm so dating myself doing this. IRC, baby. Dude, yeah. I get like an IRC message from him being like, what's going on? All my servers are down. Like, I didn't know you were this popular. I'd made you pay more for more bandwidth and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I was like, I just released a video. That's it. But they got so much traffic, I crashed all of this stuff. Wow. And then so after him, I had to find a new host. So I Damn. went and I got a, a, a I think it was, this kid was called like Toast. I think probably like around that. the time when like you're you're getting really popular in the paintball space, that's kind of when I learned about paintball as a kid. Mm -hmm. Probably. Same, like, that's around the same time. Very I well. early, early 2000s, you yeah. know? I remember like my dad, where, where were we? Like we were, I was, I was like with my church group at the time. My dad took us to like this boba place, I think. And sure, then there sure. was, there was like a, there was like a paintball store next to the boba place that we went what, to. Where were you at? Time to paintball. Oh yeah, I don't, that's like one store I know of them yeah. from my last job. I've yeah, yeah, never yeah. been there. Yeah, me neither. I never stepped foot in either. Yeah. Cause I was like a little kid. Mm -hmm. And then and then my dad's like, hey, this is a paintball store. And I'm like, what's that? And so he explained it. And so I was, so I think I was, yeah. So when you were popular, I was probably like, wow, paintball is so cool. <laughs> yeah. I want to paintball same. when I get older. That yeah, the same, yeah. No, same thing for yeah, me. Yeah. I started learning about it and I started seeing a lot of like, gameplay of it right because start because then i started surfing the internet mm -hmm. right, a little bit and like starting to see all this like yeah i remember the mid 2000s was it the x games right the, uh, the x games were televised in espn and so then, like paintball was never on the x games but paintball the nppl tournament series was on espn oh that's what, that's what it was that's what it was okay yeah yeah it was yeah, the yeah. huntington beach event which was in the coolest paintball event in history they set yeah. up the fields on the sand granted only the first year they, they didn't put down turf, so people were actually playing on sand, which is a nightmare with paintball yeah, gear because yeah, the yeah. sand gets everywhere. everywhere yeah. But it, every year after that, until the event went away, they put turf down. And yeah, because like yeah. I remember like 2005, 2004, 2005, something like I was watching TV, I was slipping through channels, and I stopped because it was ESPN and they were, and th these dudes were playing, uh, playing paintball. So, like, probably from when I was like, six or seven years old Sounds to, right. to about yeah. like eight or nine like what like around that time was the first time i've ever seen paintball gameplay mm -hmm. was, was, it was on yeah, exactly yeah and i remember it was on turf they had the inflatable they had the inflatable barricades yep. and there's they're, 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 they're doing this they're, yeah they're they're interviewing team people i was like as kids, this is a job this is sick as yeah. kids, like we see this right on this so we see them now as the same level as like professional athletes that's insane to us right yeah and i always wanted to play as well but believe it or not in my household it was actually a my dad was okay with it, but my mom Taboo. was very my mom was very much a like anti like person. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My my uh, my parents, yeah. Please make sure to point the mic to your mouth. Uh, it's pointed, it's yeah. pointed. Please make sure that when you move your head, you follow the mic. I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll move. Yeah. Left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always I'll make sure. Go with it. All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the golden age of paintball. The I, it's, I always pinpoint the golden age of paintball as 2002 to 2007. Then the recession kind of happened. Yeah. yeah. 2008. Events weren't really as big anymore. Some of the big brands uh, were going under, not making like same kind of money. Paintball used to be really lucrative uh, in the golden age. Like, uh, like Die alone was making millions of dollars just off a barrel. That's mm. it. Just selling the boomstick. Jeez. I mean, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like airsoft too. Like from like the mid early like the mid 2000s to late yeah. uh, early 2010s. That was that that was kind of like bit when airsoft there, yeah. yeah really exploded. And so yeah, like airsoft just like was printing money as an industry. Yeah. So one of the early paintball fields I used to play at was this indoor field in Van Nuys. It was called X Park, mm. and mm. they eventually it was for the longest time it was just a paintball field indoor, and then they started expanding and adding other stuff. So they had this whole other side. So it used to be an isoplex, which used to be where the Kings practiced. Yeah. yeah. And then I think they went to a different facility. Place went up for sale. These uh, paintball company or this company came in and put a paintball yeah. field but they eventually put in like an airsoft like cqb style mm. like I, I don't want to call it a field really i mean i guess it's a field yeah, it was but, a very small but field it, well it wasn't yeah. it wasn't that small it was divided up multiple rooms it was all office cubicles and stuff like that um and so that was like my first taste of seeing like real airsoft those mm. the, like the real hardcore guys would come in fully kitted up and like multi-cam and stuff like that they were all r running like 
t like TM AEGs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. they like MP5s, MP5Ks and stuff. Like, and I was just like, oh my God, these things look so cool. And then I did my research, just like, where do I get one of these? And I think the only option I really found back then was like Red Wolf. Yeah. And this is like early internet days. And like, I, you know, as a little kid, I didn't, you know, really have a job other than the acting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And so it's like, I really relied on my parents to like buy me stuff. And like, my mom wasn't going to trust some hong kong website in the early yeah. internet days like they already didn't trust the internet and then when you throw in it's a you know a foreign country, a foreign yeah. country yeah. website international it's, shipping yeah how do you yeah. know you're gonna even get your stuff and so yeah. i was so the only airsoft guns i really got as a kid is i had those like ones that took four double a's that like look like big five special ah, baby. Big five yeah. Special. yeah we all have our experience yeah. with those yeah. so me and my little brother each got big five specials i eventually traded my, one of my pump paintball guns for a gas mac 10. i don't really Yo. know what brand it was yeah. but it was it was like yeah green gas powered i had two mags for it i traded off a buddy that i used to play paintball with who lived like down this kind of a few blocks from me and stuff like that I wish I still had that gun. That thing was so sweet. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the smell of green gas in the morning, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so. well, honestly, yeah, very similar to you for me too. But um, it wasn't It wasn't because I was at a field. First time I saw yourself was actually on the news. In so, a good light or in a bad in light? In a bad light. So, I knew it was so, going to be yeah, on a bad of course, light. It's the news, man. You think they're going to put anything good on there? Yeah. yeah so, so they're like, hey, like, oh, these teenagers, you know, like they're getting stopped by police officers because like they're playing with these like toy guns that look super real. And then you have some like old fat boomer looking cop going like, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah, as you can see here, that like uh, here's here's a table full of guns. Which one's the fake one? Which one's the real one? You don't Ugh. know. And then they're like, oh, like you could buy these at like your local sporting goods store and blah, blah, blah. And I was like. That's where you can That's get, where you get them. That's where you get them? Sick. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember, I distinctly remember that like there was B-roll footage from that news report that I watched where there were like teenagers in paintball masks. I, for some reason, I thought paintball masks looked so cool when I was a kid. I think they just designed yeah. that way. And and so... I think I think a good majority of them look pretty cool. I no longer believe that. <laughs> but, but, but like... It's, it says, was says the guy footage. with night vision goggles and you know... Hey, hey, that stuff is cool. Hey, that stuff is <laughs> yeah, cool, stuff objectively. Is cool. I know, okay, but, you, but that's why. But um, <laughs> yeah, but but like these teenagers, you know, they're like in hoodies, you know, paintball masks, and they're they're playing with like their, their clear springers, like in their backyard. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. So of course, that's yeah. what I did. So we yeah, had the, yeah. the little electric ones and we didn't really have a good backyard to play in. We played in like, um, kind of like a front ish yard, front side yard yeah, of our yeah. house. So me and my brother, we would take all the trash cans and we'd set it up like one, two, three, You're one, on the two. school courses. Oh. Yeah, and so we play like, almost like more of like a kind of a paintball setup, I would yeah, say, like yeah. with the bunkers and how they're spaced with yeah, like a back, yeah. a back, a 50, and then like two ones at like the 30 quote, yeah, quote yeah. you know? Um, and then we would just literally play for hours, just, you know, just iPro and t-shirts and just shooting each other, you know, playing this little mini game. Those little tiny games, that's how you do it. Stuff. Hey, the good old days. It, yeah. was, it was a lot of fun. I don't really think it was too dangerous because those little ones, we had the clear ones, they don't look they, like they, real guns at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I did, I've done some sketchier stuff in like high school airsoft wise that probably Looking back on it, terrible idea. Yeah. I think at some point or another, a lot of us have like gone down that route of like doing. Something I mean, but it was sketchy. it was a different time. Like even yeah, even when I was in high school, like we yeah. would we would have we, we call them private fields. Yeah. And so like I grew up playing airsoft uh, in next to my high school actually. Mm -hmm. So like I so me and a bunch of my friends who were playing airsoft, uh, we we went to the same high school. We all lived like kind of like you know in this Fairly close. Uh, close by area. And actually, the, the person who ran the private field uh, was our uh, head tech for GI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. but um, yeah, but we met in high school, and uh, he yeah, but he invited me to his private field, which was basically like this tree farm and this like decommissioned railway next to our high school. And somehow he got in contact with the owner of the tree farm and the city, and he let them know that like oh, see they're, that they're at least playing. He did yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So he was being smart about yeah, it. Yeah. So actually, there were police officers that would actually come. And, and be like, check and, it out. yeah, and be like, hey, like, we know you guys are doing this, but, you know, we just have to, like, show up because someone called the cops on you. And we're like, okay. Oh, and people then, actually called the cops, though? I mean, every once in a while. Oh, like, wow. it was a very, like, I, I don't think the cops ever came every time I played, mm -hmm. but, but there were just, like, stories I hear from my buddies. Oh, yeah, like, the cops came last week. And I was like, oh, was everything okay? I was like, yeah, like, they just said that, you know, they knew that we were here. They just had to show up because someone called, mm -hmm. you know. Out of obligation. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and then I think I think the police department, our local police department, actually also did some form of like canine training in that area too. Okay. So I remember there's some weeks where we show up and then they're like, oh yeah, sorry, you guys can't play this weekend. Like we're we're doing training, 
And so it was, it was, it was very, it's a different time, you know? Yeah. Like, like there were feels like it, that. It was a different yeah. time back then. But my game like that, it was in Santa Clarita in like a wash, you know, like kind of yeah, like where- Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But so another, so I went with two friends from high school. One of them knew about the game. I, he must've read about it on like some airsoft forum or something like that. Cause this is like still pre-Facebook, Yeah. you know? So we didn't really have like that big one global, you mm -hmm. know, social media platform where people kind of like created events, really shared events and stuff like that. And definitely way before Instagram. Um, but he, we, he picked me up and my other buddy up and we drove up Santa Clarita and I don't, I don't remember. We, all I remember is just walking down the side of this wash where there's like a little bit of water running through and we're fully kitted out. I had a, I forgot, I think I had some kind of a, AK AEG at the time it, that I borrowed from my friend who drove us and stuff. But looking back, it was just so sketchy because we're literally in the middle of Santa Clarita. We're like right by Six Flags Magic Mountain, mm. you know, and I don't think zero sanction. It was just like a, a rogue kind of game, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but there was so much like growth, like trees that aligned it and stuff. Like you couldn't even see, like, you were a little concealed. You could hear cars that were on roads, but we were pretty concealed and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But it was pretty cool. I wish, it, you know, where's, I wish I had a time machine to go back to all these different yeah. things I did when I was younger and like re-experience. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, so we got a full, we got a full biography from our boy David from <laughs> Life's yeah. Jazz But uh, I, I guess, I guess the next question, I guess, is that, yeah, like you started up in paintball, you, you kind of started, you. I'm assuming during that time you played both paintball and airsoft for a while, I, right? I did yeah. mostly paintball just because it was more accessible. I had more friends. Yeah, that yeah, paintball. yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but there were some. I played some airsoft, like yeah. like I said, like at X, that place X Park. Yeah. Um, that rogue game. There's yeah. like a field in Silmar that I mm -hmm. played at a few times. Damn Silmar. Damn, that's yeah. a ways away. Well, I live. I live. Yeah, like, I grew up Valley, in the Valley. Yeah. So, so I, Silmar is close. Yeah. So I guess the next question would be like, what what made the switch for you? Because now, because now, like you're. Um, I left my job at HK Army. Um, Actually, I think we should go back even further because I think that was a big thing that we didn't even like really touch oh, yeah. on too much. So I worked yeah. as HK's marketing director. What, what year was this? Just so we get like years. a kind of a timeline. 2017, I started kind of working there part time. Mm -hmm. So I worked at the Surf Channel. I'd work at the Surf Channel from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then I'd drive from uh, Santa Monica down to Gardena. I'd do stuff with uh, Marky, who's like the, the one of the owners in the face of HK Army. We'd shoot a bunch of stuff. This was right when like Instagram re uh, stories became a thing and it was like swipe up. And we were like the first, it was, well, HK with my help doing these videos was like the first company doing that kind of marketing where you're like doing like, here's the product, swipe up, and it would directly link to their website and stuff mm. like that. And in the paintball world, HK Army was the only company that was doing that for like years. Like no one really saw the value of video and marketing content like yeah. in that kind of space. Which is weird, HK you would Army. expect paintball with being such a big thing. Yeah, but right? it's these other companies that, the people that are running them were just like a lot older and stuff. And I guess mm. they didn't see the value in it. Um, HK saw the value right away because their online numbers started going up really fast. Um, like, <laughs> so I kind of, proved it works. My, I proved my worth there like super quickly, like literally within the first two weeks. Mm. How many years uh, were you at HK? Army? 2017 to 2022, I believe 2017 was kind of part-time. I joined January full-time January, 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's when I would be traveling to all the events with them. And I was in the office Monday through Friday, uh, working weekends and stuff too. um, going to all the NXL, like the national expo league events and stuff like that, our local events and regionals. And so stuff. Doing a lot of stuff in terms of like marketing, making a lot of moves in oh, terms yeah. of like going to all these events and everything like that. So you've definitely had a lot of experience on all, not just on the industry side, but also just also being a player because you're still playing at this point, right? I was, but not as much really. Mm -hmm. I tried to play. I stopped competing literally once I went to college. Um, I just, I never, I had kind of opportunities to, I, I wouldn't say go pro. I could have made some moves that would have set me up for that. I never really had the parent support to go pro because it was such a big time commitment mm -hmm. for some of these teams I was trying out for. It was like a lot of traveling and being in, I don't, you know, being in school. My parents didn't like me missing school to travel to events. Um, but so I, you know, I would play more recreationally for fun and stuff like that. Oh, actually, wait, college. So that was like back in college, I was competing and then during college, it was just too expensive because I didn't have any sponsorships out there or anything yeah. like that. Because I used to pay a dollar to play at SC Village. And nice. then I was nice. Getting, <laughs> one of the teams I was playing on was so sponsored, I got free paint, nice. which is like the craziest Ooh. thing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I played for, there was a pro team called San Diego Legacy. I played for their division two. It was like a feeder team. Like you do yeah. good on the D2 team, you get moved up to the pro team. I never made that bump up. Mm. I was never that good. <laughs> I tried, <laughs> but I could never, I could never swing it. Um, so in college, I played for a team called, um, or I didn't really play for, I would practice with them. It's called uh, Denver Altitude, which was like the number one team in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And they were made up of like four dudes from Colorado 
and then three dudes from Illinois, Chicago area. And so they were short one guy for practices in Colorado. So I would fill in, I'd practice with them, run reps, but even as a top team in Colorado, they were paying a lot of money every week in the practice and being like in college and having those kind of expenses, I just kind of like had to make Couldn't choice. justify it, yeah. yeah. So I just took a break, you know, I, I sold a lot of my gear, I kept some stuff, you know, I always kind of followed the sport and the game and stuff like that. Um, and in that time, HK Army like got really big because I knew those guys when I first started making paintball videos as they were just a team and like a small brand. And then in that time from there to when I started working for them, they turned into like a full on like industry leading company. Yeah. And making like goggles, making harnesses, custom jerseys, pants, uh, they even had shoes, you know, then they started had their own brand of paintballs and stuff like that. Um, so by the time I started working for them, yeah, they were a full-on company and so i was still playing i started kind of playing again in 2014 mm. me and my brother both were working and my brother's like hey you want to start playing paintball again and i was like i was like yeah i kind of actually kind of do <laughs> that sounds and he's fun. like he's like i just want to play recreationally he's like i went on ebay and i bought myself a pump gun and i was like really i was like okay so i went and i bought myself a, a gun called an auto cocker it's a fully mechanical gun um and uh spent like 200 bucks on it and then we started playing just recreation on weekends and it was good because i you know it was time i got to spend with my little brother and stuff like that because we go in phases where we kind of like drift apart get closer drift mm -hmm. apart but you know when we're playing paintball we're both getting along and stuff because we're just like on the field together crushing these other teams because we're two <laughs> former tournament players playing <laughs> walk on paintball and stuff former like pro that. comes back i'm always nice on the field like i've always been trying to be like like when there's rental players i shoot them in the goggle or in the harness so they don't feel it you know uh, other people like if they're kind of dicks or people you know then i would kind of shoot them in more tender spots if Damn. i had the opportunity but and i've kind of carried that over into airsoft too i was actually that was going to lead into the next question too and you can feel free to chime in on this you put your own inputs as well boys but that is something that i think as like airsofters we do hear a lot of uh, or see it even experience it firsthand where there might be i don't want to call out paintball per se mm -hmm. right but i will say a little bit that i do notice that there is a little bit of some of that like toxicity that sort of toxic behavior that happens on the fields where kids into like you know devolves into fights and arguments not saying it doesn't happen for airsoft trust me we know it does as well but from someone that's jumped from paintball to airsoft have you noticed that sort of major difference did you say that generally it's okay oh, man i've only seen a few like really bad fights in my paintball career mm -hmm. some were like really bad like cops had to show up and stuff like oh, that geez. people getting arrested like a, like full-on assault stuff I've seen some other stuff that's been kind of like mitigated a little bit or hasn't been like too serious. In airsoft, I don't even think I've seen a fight at the field yet. Now that I think about it, I've seen some tempers flare, mm. always happens and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, paintball, I guess with the more tournament competitive side, cause I mean, airsoft does have the speed soft side. It's not as big as the paint tournament. Paintball oh, of course. Side. Yeah. We're not on ESPN yet. <laughs> so I, yeah. On the tournament field, tempers are more likely to flare. There is a thing people call b bonus balling. That's shooting people at, you know, after they're hit, you know, mm -hmm. like you shoot them a few more times and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it, I'd probably say paintball is a bit more toxic. Um, I don't know. I've seen some pretty toxic stuff in airsoft though. I feel like it's the math. It's the math is like who, who is the bigger hobby space? Mm -hmm. It's probably paintball. Yeah, of course. So you have more people coming into paintball. I so. don't know, man. I think for a tournament paintball, the tournament and competitive side, paintball's bigger. I think on a recreational side, I think airsoft's still bigger like worldwide. I, I don't think so because like even even like locally in Southern California, if you look at paintball versus airsoft, like if, if there's a field that offers both, yeah, yeah, the paintball side's always going to be bigger. Yeah. So so like um, you, you yeah, so there. majority of fields. Uh, across the U.S., yeah. there there are very few number of actual dedicated airsoft fields. It's usually a paintball field with airsoft. that happens to offer airsoft, right? Yeah. So so you play on the same field, which I'm not a yeah. fan of. I'm not a fan either. I don't but, like getting my kit. But 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 it's day. but it's the numbers. To, to yeah. some people, yeah. I'm, for, for, to be fair, too, but, to but a lot of say, players, that's all they have. Yeah. yeah but but let's say, for example, let's take a sample group. Let's take a like a sample size of let's say like in a local area or a certain region. It's like a million paintball players. Let's say one million. Let's say, and then versus like. 500,000 airsoft players, let's say, in a given it's half group. The size? No, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying hypothetically, okay, hypothetically right? We're doing hypothetically, yeah. And so, like, let's say there's in each group, there's 1% of, of each population are like bad actors. They're, they're like, you know, not yeah. courteous, not, not etiquette, you know, players. Yeah, obviously, there's going to be more on the paintball side than the airsoft side. Because it's, it's a numbers players. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see yeah. that. But I mean, generally, like what I like to preach and what I like to tell people like on like when I'm on the field or even like online, like on our videos is 
uh, it's just like the headspace that you need to get into when you play, mm -hmm. whether it's paintball or airsoft. Like I understand, like when you saw those, those like tournament players or yeah. like speed speed, uh, speed softers would like to play competitively, and like that's great. But if you're in a walk-on game, you know, yeah, with the, everyone else, yeah, like you should you should not play as if like oh this is practice for me to like slaughter the enemy team. I always guess you I know, kind of it's... figured that would be might have been more likely the case solely because even at a recreational level, I would say that paintball is significantly more expensive than airsoft. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know what I mean? You're spending all this money even just for like paint to go into the field and then it's like, oh, you're just not even getting to use it, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. But it, it's, it, but I think paintball is just, it's uh, people are willing to pay the price for that because mm -hmm. like, it's, it's such a more familiar concept. Sure. You know, like for example, like office parties. You know, like yeah, they like, usually go paintballing. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like, hey, like we need a team building day or whatever, right? It's you like, start oh, we should go, them. <laughs> yeah, play, yeah, we should go play paintball. Everyone kind of knows what paintball is. Yeah. yeah, you can ask, you can ask like Stacy in the receptionist corner over there at the office, yeah. be like, hey. Do you know what paintball is? And she'll probably have an idea of what it is. But if you say, hey, you want to play airsoft, they'll be like, what is that? Yeah, and it's been yeah. on TV and stuff like that, like yeah. in sitcoms and stuff. I remember King of the Hill, there's yeah. a paintball Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where I think Hank gets the final kill. He dresses up as the yeah, golf yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, paintball is like reference everywhere, even in like The Office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, hey, Air, or, yeah, Malcolm got, in the Middle, on, yeah, all Air, these shows. On South Park, we got the airsoft episode. The airsoft you know? episode. Finally, yeah. baby. Yeah. I love was, that episode. That was a great episode. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, um, Startlingly accurate. <laughs> yeah. South Park does not miss. No, they really yeah. don't. It was, they had a few things wrong, but that overall, I would give it. I yeah. would give it an the, A. The, the details obviously were kind of iffy, but I'm just saying, like the the general. Yeah. <laughs> crowd of folks. <laughs> 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 that episode's good. We the gotta watch it again. People, yeah. Oh okay. man. So going, reflecting back on like your paintball days, and like now that you're in airsoft, right? You started working over. Is there anything you miss uh, about the paintball world, or anything that you wish I, yourself was different about that was similar, more similar to paintball? Yeah, honestly, the only thing I really miss are like certain friends of mine that I met that I when I would travel and stuff like that. Other than that, I don't miss going to events. They were long and grueling. They were 5 a.m. call time. Like we'd be up at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. calls. Oh. 5 a.m. to go to the field. The first game usually started at 7 a.m. Um, and then like I'm literally getting shot with paintballs from 7 a.m. till. 4 or 5 p.m. Depending some games, like when the sun's out longer, they would push the schedule. So there would be times I'd be on the field from 7 a.m. literally to like 6 p.m. or Damn. later. Then it's, we go back to the, the booth at the, because mm -hmm. we, HK Army, we're, we'd have a big vent, like booth yeah. with yeah, yeah, all yeah, of yeah. our product and stuff like that. So we go back to the booth and then we wait because I don't know why this was a thing, but they always wanted to be the last one closed. I wanted to show that we're here the latest, you know? And so there'd be a standoff between us and like another company of like, who's going to close up first? First one in, last one out. Dumbest thing. Yeah, we just thought it was the stupidest thing and then we go all go to dinner and because we're eating with like over like for anywhere from between six to ten people of, of staff yeah dinner would take like two to three hours then i get back to the hotel start editing content i shot earlier that day i'd be up till like 1 1 32 a.m just to fall back asleep and be up at 5 a.m and it, it was just rough and then That's at my age since we already discovered earlier that i'm a boomer um <laughs> that it gets tough when you get to be like you know up in your 30s and stuff like that so and then the way I would film paintball, like the kind of shots I would do, uh, most people in paintball film, film media wise, would just do like I call side angle. They're on the sidelines and they're just filming a side angle of the person like shooting and stuff like that. I mean, like it's that. safe. Yeah. It's safe, but it's boring. Yeah. I'm always behind the guy that's shooting, and and so you could see. So I'm, I'm like framed up. The guy's like if he's shooting here. Yeah. I'm like right over his shoulder, so you could see where the balls are landing. And the best shots I ever got is where you see this guy, and I'm focused on him, and then I rack my focus as he's shooting and hitting the guy that he's aiming at. Mm. And that's where I kind of like, what well, was my specialty in paintball. I was doing angles and different kind of shots that no everyone else was either afraid to do or didn't want to do because they didn't want to risk their gear or get you know. Because I would literally stand the in stand in lanes and I would be getting hit, you know. 20 30 40 times just for one shot and i'm just standing there taking it trying to hold my camera on the on the on monopod or tripod as steady as i could mm. just to get that one clip master and dedicated to his craft well it paid off because i've gotten some clips that have done millions of views on instagram and stuff like that from like that's that pretty kind of damn position. good man yeah. and then i took a lot of that what i learned doing that and i apply it to airsoft so if you watch a lot of my airsoft like event content or like anytime i shoot like more like speed soft kind of stuff i'm always behind the people all the bbs and it's so much cooler with tracer bbs yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah in paintball the trend in tournament paintball is dark colored shell paint so the other team can't see it so people ah. are shooting these dark purple balls and so you don't really get the you don't 
what, okay, when I shoot 240 FPS, 1080, you could kind of see the paint a little better, but, um, but if you're not shooting that like low that, or that high a frame rate, you're not you're not going to see like even streaks of it really because of mm -hmm. how dark the paintballs are and they're not really reflecting any kind of light yeah. from the sun and stuff like that. So that's why I think airsoft filming is so much cooler because you got the tracer BBs like flying past my camera. I have tons of clips where my lens is literally getting shot and you see the BBs bounce off my lens and stuff like that. Um, so I took a lot of what I learned from paintball and what made me like a good paintball videographer and stuff like that. And I applied that to airsoft. And so that's why, you know, and especially the stuff, the work I do in the speedsoft world, I kind of like got a lot of popularity and stuff like that. You know, I got, I got one video that hit seven mil on my TikTok. Uh, a speed soft video. It's pretty damn impressive, nice. actually. Yeah not, yeah, not too bad. Especially on TikTok, considering I'm on TikTok too, and a lot of the stuff that I will post will, the minute that it starts blowing up a little bit, I'm like, oh, this is tracking really well. Instant down. Like, See, I, down. I think where I get away with it is a lot of those speed softers are using guns that look kind of, granted the pistol players, the high capos look more realistic, mm. but the guys that play rifle are using guns that literally look like paintball guns. Yeah. yeah. You know? Makes sense. So. But is there anything, okay, so obviously not too much that you miss from the paintball days per se, more so the people, Yeah. but you're applying a lot of that stuff towards paintball. Is, what is it about airsoft, like outside of the content creation space that you actually enjoy more so than paintball? Is there anything stand out or no? Well, well, like what, what made you make the switch? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I don't want to really dive into too much why I left sure, sure, care sure. me. No, um, no, 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 not, 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 not about the company, but okay. I'm saying like, you know, you're, like you, so, you made the transition from playing paintball to airsoft. So yeah, so I actually in 2016, I did a, a video up at, um, there's that, Oh man, it's up in like Mojave. It's like the airplane, like tactical kind yeah, of tack challenge. Tack challenge. Yeah. So I filmed tack challenge for another airsoft manufacturer. I got hired. I was working kind of like as like with, with some friends and doing like a small production company thing. And we got hired to work for this one manufacturer. What, what year was it? 2016 or 17, oh, okay. Okay. I think yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the two. And so I, you know, I did that video and, um, so that was kind of like an introduction to airsoft and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. And like, you know, my, my gear's not all covered in paint or anything like that. You know, it's when I would get hit, it wasn't like too, it wasn't too terrible. It stung yeah. a little bit, but it wasn't anything like getting pelted with paintballs over and over. Yeah, that, that hurts. So that made me kind of, yeah. So I kind of saw that there's potential there. And then um, a really good uh, friend of mine um, that owns a retail, sh an airsoft and paintball retail shop here in Southern California. He gave me a call and I was kind of just working part time in between. I was working for uh, a friend of mine's company doing their marketing and me and him and I were just playing golf every morning, like 7 a.m. tea time. <laughs> like it was it was very nice and very peaceful month that I kind of like took to myself to work part time. But he gave me a call. He's like, hey, you know, Lancer Tacticals hiring. And I actually at that time I had a Lancer uh, Proline AEG that that same guy gave me because he gave me back when I was still at HK, he gave me that pro line, a bunch of magazines. He put a, a, a light on my gun and like, uh, kind of like, you know, like dressed it up a bit for me, yeah. gave me a gun bag. And he didn't charge me. He said, just tag me and you can have it. Cause I had a pretty decent sized Instagram following at the time I had, I think back then around like 28 or 30,000 on my personal Instagram. So I think he was hoping that I would convert some more paintballers over into airsoft sure, you know, sure. and stuff like that. And I was starting to play at Tax City, like back around that time on like the Speed QB nights and stuff. Cause I was like very kind of just close to home with like paintball. And I'd go on some full force Thursdays, I think. I think it was Thursdays back then. So I play some full force and stuff like that. Um, but he called me up when I was kind of just working part time after HK and he's like, Hey, you know, Lancer's looking for a video person. And I knew a few people that worked here and stuff like that. So I came in interviewed and with my background and like what I did for HK army and stuff like that. Um, they, you know, they offered me a job right on the spot. It's, and I still say it's probably like one of the best career moves I've, I've ever done is switching to, to Lancer and switching from paintball into airsoft. But what about, what about like the hobby side? You know, like I, so he, so I he enjoy playing I know you airsoft. mentioned that it was a little more realistic yeah. and not as messy. Yes. Those are two things mm -hmm. that I remember that, you said. Plus, I love indoor airsoft. I love playing CQB, whether it's at uh, Project N1 up in El Monte, big shout out. Project N1, oh, yeah, I, love, yeah. I love, I love playing Project there. N1, yeah. Same. So thank you guys. And then same Tax City, um, Tax City Airsoft in Fullerton. Um, and then also now Adrenaline in uh, Gardena. I played there a few times also. So I don't know, like we talked about earlier how I'm a sweaty boy. Mm -hmm. I just like being inside, you know, I'm very fair skin. I <laughs> die in the sun. I just get more freckles if you can believe that's even possible, but it somehow happens. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, I just, 
you know, I like the indoor aspect of it. Even if it, they're not, these fields are not air conditioned, I'm not getting, you know, just blasted by the blasted sun. By yeah. the sun. Gotcha. So, and I just like the pace of indoor airsoft. A lot I faster, like, more aggressive. I like how quickly the games are turned around. Like you go to Project N1, I, I'm, I'm winded after my first set. You know, because it's just game, game, game. And I'm the kind of, I don't really camp. I like to move. I like to be mobile, like checking out, you know, check every corner and stuff and try to move up the field as quickly as I can and get a flank on people. Or just like go up the center and then kind of just like, because people like to usually play the two tapes there. Center usually doesn't get a ton of love. So it's easy to kind of work your way up the center sometimes. Also depends who's there and who you're playing against and stuff like that. But I've had good success just kind of going down the middle and getting behind everyone. And yeah, I just, I don't know, it just, I've been having so much more fun. It's kind of like the feeling I got when I first started playing paintball when I was a kid. And that feeling's kind of just stayed with me these past, you know, the past two years I've been at Lancer. When I, but, you know, granted, I've been at the field filming so much lately. I haven't been playing much um, past couple months, mm -hmm. I would say. I'm kind of waiting for the temperature to cool down here in Cali because yeah, right now we're going through a heat wave. It's right. uh, it's over it's pretty hot. It's over 100 yeah. degrees outside here in Santa, Fe, you know, in Santa Fe Springs. Some of the fields like Code Red out in Lake Paris, it's probably hitting over 110. Yeah, you know, uh, probably same with Wildlands and Dude, and, and I, I Paris. played. I, I played. We've, I played in um, 110. 110. We yeah. played. We've done it before. Yeah, 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 I've done it. Yeah, like there was one weekend where I was out there. It was. It was. It was like about 110. Uh, thank God, no humidity. Yeah, that's but, the best uh, but, part but there was but but there was a wildfire nearby, Ooh, and so, so air quality uh, sucked. yeah, air quality sucked. I mean, and I think it just like made it overall just like hotter for some reason. But mm -hmm. I remember I sweat so much that day that uh, I sweat I sweat out all my electrolytes, and so did you have the salt lines too when you took off your blanket? I, I mean, that that happens like all the time. <laughs> that, that's like a right normal occurrence. But like I just I remember I sweat so much, and so like I was I was drinking a lot of water, but. I guess I just sweat out all my electrolytes. So towards like halfway or towards the end of the day, my entire body cramped up. Like, oh no. Like it was to the point where like, if I even bent my fingers, my fingers are cramped, you know? That's I'll tell you, tough. Yeah. I'll tell you about the it's time rough. that I had to carry someone off the field, right? I had to, Taylor, I actually had to carry oh, him off the field because uh, he had uh, gone through a, a mild heat stroke when Dang. we were playing at Wildlands because it was 108 to about 110, depending on the Dang. time of the day. It was so bad I had to drag him out. And we had, yeah, it was pretty homie's, bad. Homie's one of the, he's up there with like the world's least fit airsoft players. Uh, right? Unfortunately, yes, and I had to carry him. It was so, not fun. <laughs> I hate to admit this. I actually got like minor heat stroke at uh, Code Red one time. Dang. I was just, the, it was a really hot, actually the crazy thing is it wasn't even like that hot, but I just didn't hydrate well beforehand yeah. mm. and i have like a pro uh, this i was with um it was me uh valiant airsoft mm -hmm. and like two other buddies of mine and valiant always says to me he's like dude you go way too hard the first game and then you just don't you know you're like over yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. and the first match at wild or not wild it's at code red is usually like this um cqb field they have yeah. in the back and it's the only place with no med that's the only time you can play no med yeah which is like my favorite <laughs> of course uh, so, yeah. so I'm, I'm just running yeah i'm running around like and i, I was just dying and i have a telltale sign because it's happened to me a few times it's happened to me paintballing it's happened to me snowboarding before i lose vision on my peripherals it gets mm. really fuzzy right here so you're really tunnel visioned. Not, it, yeah. It's just weird. It's like yeah. fuzzy. Kind of, like, I, it's hard to describe. Dang. I like okay. lose. I literally, I'll go like Literal this. Literal I'll go like yeah. this and I can't see my hand right there. Oh. And then and then after that, it's followed by a really bad headache. And if it's really bad, I start vomiting uncontrollably. Ah. And like. The biggest life hack is hydrate the, the night day before. before. I thought I did, but I guess that's, I didn't. That, do it. That's, that's enough. Like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that's enough. That's every it's, time, every time I give advice on yeah. playing yourself, I'm like, hydrate the night before. I did. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen to Boaz, kids. He's he's right because it's not fun. Because uh, luckily, I it wasn't. A, I've had it worse. I caught it early because I started losing the sight. I went straight to my car, started drinking water and stuff. I knew my day it's was too late. It's too late. Yeah. I knew my day was pretty much over, but at least I didn't vomit and it didn't turn into a really. Because when I get the headaches after that. It's usually I'm stuck with that headache for at least a day or two. Yeah. That's like, a it, serious it, migraine. It's yeah. Terrible. Mm -hmm. the and the hydration not, headache. <laughs> yeah. and it's really bad. It causes the, that's the what vomiting, I'm, I'm vomiting yeah. and stuff. And so it's not fun. Yeah, everyone out there, please hydrate. Especially if it's hot out. Even if it's not hide out, hot out, it's just smart. Always a smart idea to just hydrate yeah. right beforehand. Yeah. So I did a bad job hydrating that week. I paid for it, um, and you know I learned definitely learned my lesson. Yeah. I think time. I think that's a hard thing. I think like once you like decide, okay, I'm playing airsoft for like the long term. Is sort of like how do you pace yourself throughout the day? Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because because I I kind of suffer a similar problem. Is sort of like when um, 
like I'll, I'll I'll wear my actual like play carrier for like when it, when I go like shooting and stuff. Real I, plates. I just, I, yeah. I just use it as like a like a like a training opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you know like I'm I'm always rocking the field with at least 25 pounds of kit on me. Yeah. And so like yeah I mean I'll still like the first two games I'll be sprinting I'll be like trying to maneuver aggressively, and after that I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me minus yeah. the real plates. I just run our um, the foam plates we sell. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're very nice and light, you know. Well, even then, though, like again, people just learning how to control yourself. Obviously, don't let the adrenaline get the better of you. Learning how to properly pace yourself, I think, is something everyone can benefit yeah. from. You know what's crazy is I've been doing this so long, and I have not learned that. <laughs> I just like, like the adrenaline kicks in, yep. and I just I just like to be an aggressive kill, 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 player. Kill, 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 I guess it's the same when I play video games. When yeah, I'm yeah. running. Counter. I think I think we need to take him to a Milsim event. Yes, I, yeah. I've done a couple Milsims. I played a few. Like Act, what? Okay. Like what? Like what? Claw? That's not, That's not a Milsim. Oh no 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 well, no! I don't want to dislike claws. Um, Lion Claw is cool, but it's more of a it, force on force. It, it is, it is, it is. Yeah, still there was some objective based Milsim. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is still Milsim. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, other than that, I've done Battle for LA like the last two years. That's more. I, of I, a I don't know. I don't know if I. Force. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that's just more, a big event. Seems yeah. more like Milsim light event. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we need to put you through because because Lion Claws they also do three day long events too. Like it's not. I don't know if I want to do that though. I like playing airsoft. I like playing on like a just like on the weekend. I go and then can come home and shower and relax. You don't like camping? No, I hate camping. Oh, what? Oh my. You, you know what? You know what? You this know is what? over. I, I, podcast is over. It's I wouldn't expect any less from <laughs> someone who grew up in the valley. Uh, yeah, but you know what, David? It, it was it was great having you dude, on. Dude, thank you so much for jumping on. We're gonna, we're gonna end a, on that. You, you, yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah, we're ending Listen, up. man, you said you don't like candy, so <laughs> I don't I don't know what else to say to you. No. But you know what? You have a wealth of stories, Wait, so I'm pretty sure we'll have you. I, I gotta plug a few things. Oh yeah, yeah, really. yeah. Anything you wanna plug? Yeah. Um, make sure you're following. I'm sure you guys are. Make sure you're following us at Lancer Tactical on, on Instagram. Unfortunately, we're shadow banned, so you got to type out the whole word shadow ban like yep. the rest. We know what that's like. Community. Yep. Um, so that uh, guys, a lot of people have been messaging about Gen Four. They are coming pretty soon. I don't have an exact exact date yet, um, but we we are we're like right there and stuff like that. It's happening. Another yep. note: um, we've dropped the price on our Gen Threes and our Gen Two. Yep. Oh yes, ludicrous. Yes. Ludicrous. So how I mean, are you guys making money? Dude, I don't know. He's not a numbers yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not a numbers guy. They don't <laughs> they don't show me any of the numbers. Um, so yeah, so be sure if you're looking for a new gun for either yourself or you want a backup or for like when you like I always have a couple because I like to introduce people to airsoft. Yeah, of yeah. course. The loaner, the loaner, the loaner gun, guns. Yeah. And so I always have a couple different loaner guns. I have one just like this uh, Zion Arms R15 SBS right here. And it doubles as like my indoor gun too. Yeah. Uh, I got my Pro Line Lancer, uh, like MK18 style, um, that I got from from my friend uh, years ago. Still works great. Yeah. Uh, when I first started working here, I actually gave it to the Texier here to tune up, and they threw all Gen 3 internals and. and nice. Hell yeah, yeah awesome. brother! Nice. Yeah. I was like, I just wanted to tune up. He's like, Oh well, you got a Gen 3 now. So, <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. So. Um, so he basically yeah. has a fake MGC4 almost. Yeah, basically. Almost. Or fake Zion Arms. Uh, yeah, R15, that's cool. yeah, it's quad rail, so yeah, we're yeah. almost there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so yeah, make sure you follow us on all our socials and stuff like that. Gen 4 coming soon. AirTac collab for all you like indoor and speed soft guys. That's, we're, we're getting really close to that. I saw some of the pictures of the samples and stuff. Nice. It's, looking, yeah. it's looking really good. So we're, I'm really excited about that and finally getting to do all the marketing stuff like that. And, and thank you for having me on, guys. No, dude, fun. Yeah, no, dude yeah, it was super fun to have you on. We'll, we'll definitely have you on more often. You have you're, so many you're, freaking you're, stories, you're, dude. Dude, you have no idea. Your boss wants me on once a month. I don't uh, know if I can do I, that. I don't, know if, I don't know if we want you on once a month. Whoa! But, but, I, I don't, but I don't blame him. I don't blame yeah. him. <laughs> but, but definitely, you will definitely be a recurring guest. Yep. Yeah, we'll I mean, I mean you, you are you are close by in the local area anyway, uh, so you know pretty it's much, convenient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only that, guys, if you want to continue supporting the channel directly, make sure to go out and get all your airsoft products from airsoftgi.com for all your airsoft needs, including all the Lance Tactical products that were mentioned previously. They are all available on our website right now, so make sure to go out and check it out. Make sure to go ahead and still like this podcast as well, Boaz. Yeah, and um, yeah, just go go off what uh, Isaiah said. Right, like if you guys check the airsoft GI website regularly, we are adding thousands of products. Yeah, you guys and have just a lot so of stuff many, on there. So many, so many new products coming on, guys, and also lots of 
uh, flash or like quick shocker deal sales. You know, you can get some really deep discounts. You know, if you just show up at the airsoftgi.com website, just at the right place, right time, you could really score a killer deal on a lot of these things. Not only that, any orders 179 or more automatically qualify for free UPS ground that's shipping. Right, and in this economy, right. that is nothing to laugh at. That's, that's huge, huge right yeah. now. That's yeah. massive. And then, are you guys doing a shopping spree giveaway still? So that one, it. so the shopping spree was already claimed. We're oh, modifying okay. it at this time right now, at the time of this podcast. We're, we're, we're like, we're uh, reworking it. We're, we're, we're trying right to, okay. we're trying to incentivize, you know, like more participation. Okay. You know? So, uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to just mix things up. Oh, I'm sorry if I screwed yeah. up your ad read. Then. No, 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 dude. You, no, just, no, no. No, you are fine, bro. Yeah, you are yeah. fine. All right, guys. No, no, no to Boaz. Cut that part out. <laughs> Editor's note. I'm, no, there's no way. I'm cutting it's anything out. It's, it's going to be a raw it's upload. All raw. I can't it's wait. It's all raw, baby. All right, guys. Until next time, my name is Isaiah. And Boaz. And we also have... David. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys.